I really struggled to find the words I wanted to say today. Then I remembered who we were all here to celebrate and realized it didn't really matter what I said because Ryan would have loved it no matter what. I've never felt more unconditionally loved by anyone outside of my family, but then again, he always felt like family. Ryan loved best and he was never afraid, shy, or embarrassed to let you know just how much. I wrote Ryan a letter a few years ago, but I never ended up sending it to him. Looking back on it now, I feel like it is a good attempt at capturing who he was and the deep love for him that the people close to him felt. I'd like to share parts of it with you now. My dearest Bethy, I love you so much and you really have the best heart. I can't wait until we are both married and have kids. I seriously would love to have kids at the same time as you and have them grow up together. But you know me. So much of me just wants to be free and to be alive and to love and be loved and do whatever makes me happy to be drunk and high on life and love and freedom and not care what anyone else says or does or thinks. I know that's how you are too. I wish life was just that simple and we, everyone, could really just be so happy and nothing else mattered but that. I'm just drunk, but I really mean it. All of it. I really hope that where you are right this moment gives you the time that you need to reflect on your life and where it has taken you. Be you and never let anyone take your individuality away. You are such a beautiful, smart, amazing person. Don't waste your life with the people that will take advantage of your goodness, your pure, genuine nature. Love with all your heart, and if you don't get what you deserve, move on. Let people go and let people in. I love you. You are my true best friend, and I will never leave you behind. Nicole Helena Turner. We all know that Ryan wasn't perfect, but he was himself, and that was a lot better than perfect. Ryan was endlessly loyal to the people that he loved. He was the definition of a ride or die. I would call him to hang out or run some errand with me and he would drop what he was doing in an instant. In the rare case that he absolutely couldn't, he would offer to come pick me up and take me with him. Ryan always had his friends' backs, even if it meant going out of his way to attempt to correct a stupid mistake they made. I pulled up in front of his house one day and managed to swipe his next door neighbor's mailbox with my side view mirror. <laughs> I immediately called Ryan, freaking out and telling him to come outside and told him what happened. He assured me that it was no big deal and he could take care of it. With tears of embarrassment in my eyes, I walked up to the neighbor's front door to let them know of the damage their mailbox had incurred. I assured them that I was assured by their lovely neighbor, Ryan, that he was going to repair the mailbox to its pre-damaged condition. With a knowing look, the neighbor thanked me for fessing up and gave us the go-ahead to, to, to give repair our best shot. Ryan collected his tools, a hammer, and some measly nails and spent some time working on the mailbox while I looked on anxiously. Although the end result may have been slightly more damaged than what I had initially caused, <laughs> the gesture that Ryan made was much bigger than a mailbox. Ryan was daring, but he was smooth and he was lucky as hell. When we were in high school, he spent most nights letting Katie, Roxanne, and I go through his phone, straighten his hair, and to the chagrin of his father when he showed up the next day at his soccer game, he once even let us shave his leg. <laughs> it was on one of these countless nights, well, really mornings, when he got a call from his dad around 4 a.m. The call went something like this. Brian, where the hell are you? It's 4 a.m. Dad, I told you I was at Kyle's house. What do you mean? I'm getting in the car right now and I'm coming to pick you up. Click. Ryan and I grew up living in the same neighborhood. Kyle's house was across the neighborhood, across Kempsville Road. I always imagine what happened next, like the scene in Ferris Bueller when he's running through backyard barbecues, jumping over fences, and at one point even running side by side with his father's car, trying to beat him home so he isn't caught. <laughs> but just like Ferris Bueller, he somehow was able to pull it off. He was always able to pull it off. I admired Ryan for his ability to make every person he came into contact with feel like they really mattered. Ryan never met a stranger. It didn't matter your age, race, religion, job, past, whatever. Around this time last year, I was home over Christmas and dragged Ryan along with me to McDonald's Garden Center. I found one of the workers while shopping around and asked her a question about some plant. Ryan came over and started talking to this stranger like she was an old friend. They went on and on and on our way out exchanged Instagram handles. And this is just one fleeting example of the many times I, sometimes begrudgingly and impatiently so, witnessed Ryan brightening the day of someone he owed nothing to. Ryan would do anything for the people he loved. One day, very on, 
Very early on in our friendship, school was closed due to extreme weather conditions. There was a tropical storm going on, lots of rain, lots of wind. Ryan was at his house and I was at mine with a friend. The three of us thought it would be a good idea to hang out and why not do it by walking on up to Wendy's for lunch. We weren't scared of some stupid storm. I just had to call my mom first to obtain permission and confirm this wasn't the stupidest idea. My mom said, no, probably not a good idea, just make something at home. I called Ryan to give him the bad news and he showed up on my front porch about an hour later, sopping wet from head to toe, no umbrella in sight. He did, however, have a torn and tattered soggy bag full of Wendy's. <laughs> Ryan Corbett Jenks played an immeasurable role in shaping the person that I am today, and I will honor him by letting his blinding light continue to shine through me today and every day.